Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And there is power in his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a precious name. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's just take a minute to just worship this great God. Hallelujah. 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 We exalt you, Lord. Oh, God, we look to you tonight, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because all we need is in you, Lord. Hallelujah. We can have our hands, Lord. It's in you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can hear the trouble fine. Hallelujah. You can set the captives free. Lord, God, all we need is in you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank Opening him tonight is him 60. Hallelujah. Sweeter than all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
just lift our hands and worship the Lord. Wherever you are in the building tonight, I really want us to use this moment to just worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, mm. hallelujah, praise God, thank you Jesus, tonight we're going to approach the throne of grace, but I want to encourage us tonight to not to think about what's coming next. But I really want to encourage us to bask in the awesome presence of this great God. And so, really, we're not here to waste time. But we are here to lift up the name of Jesus. So one more time, even before we pray together, I want you to close your eyes. Just to shut out all the distractions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just want you to worship God as if your life depends on it tonight. Wherever you are in the building, just lift your voices and begin to exalt this God. For he is great. Hallelujah. His voice is sweeter than all. Thank you, Jesus. You are the great I am. You are the everlasting Father. You are the Prince of Peace. We exalt your name tonight, Jesus. We love you tonight, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Grab a hold of one person. Hallelujah. And tonight, we're just going to believe God. Thank you, Jesus. One person's hand. Hallelujah. Whatever your need is tonight, whatever your need is tonight, he's able to meet every need. Every need. Regardless of how you're feeling tonight, Jesus Christ is here. And as long as he's here, he makes a difference. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's all pray tonight. Let's all pray Let's open our mouth and pray tonight. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you one more time for another opportunity, Lord, to come in your presence. We recognize, Lord, that we are nothing. But Lord Jesus Christ, as long as, Lord, you are in charge, of us Lord God Almighty then we have everything to boast about Lord you are still God you are still worthy to be praised Lord God Almighty sometimes our obstacles sometimes Lord the trials Lord God Almighty would want to crowd us in but Lord Jesus Christ you are still faithful you are still awesome you still reign supreme you are still alive. You are still in charge. You are still in control. And Lord God Almighty, the good thing about it is that we still have some worshipers tonight. Even though, God, many have come making sacrifices. Lord God Almighty, they will still worship. Hallelujah. 
Lord Almighty tonight, we know Jesus, hallelujah, that you are here. We know that you are here, Lord, and we can feel your presence. Lord, we don't want to take it for granted, hallelujah, because where the presence of the Lord is, there is liberty. Mighty God, we are alive. And because we are alive, we're not on the hospital bed. Because we're alive, we're going to open our mouths and exalt you, Lord Jesus. We recognize, Jesus, that you don't require 95%, nor 98 but you require all. Jesus, help us, Lord God, tonight to give you our all, to give you our best. Lord Jesus, show up, Lord God. Minister God the way you desire. Take full charge of this service tonight. We ask, oh God, that you will have your way. We ask, oh God, that you will have your way. Why you love us so, Lord God. Oh, how you love us. God, sometimes we can't understand how is it that you love us so much. Your stubborn love that never lets go of us. We thank you tonight for your love. Thank you, Lord, that you still love us. Minister Jesus. Oh, God. Have your way, Jesus. Let everything be done to your honor and your glory. Let no self exalt his or herself. But God, tonight, we are fully committed, fully submitted to your will, to your way, to your purpose, to your call. Lord Jesus, we say yes, Lord God. So in the name of Jesus Christ, Discouragement has to go. In the name of Jesus Christ, sickness has to flee. In the name of Jesus Christ, self has to be slain. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are victorious. Lord God Almighty, in the name of Jesus, we believe God Almighty that whatever you have spoken unto us, it shall come to pass and it is well and so we thank you lord for being with us tonight we thank you lord god that you will even stop to listen to us oh god thank you lord for being who you are ah uh, thank you lord for being who you are had it not been for the grace and mercy of God. I don't know, Lord, where some of us would be. But thank you tonight. Thank you, Lord, for mercy and grace. Thank you, Lord God, for your blood that washes whiter than snow. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your forgiveness. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. We tell you thanks tonight for hearing and answering our prayers. In Jesus' name. Can we all say in Jesus' name? Can we all say in Jesus' name? Can we all say in Jesus' name? I've anchored my soul in the heaven of rest. I'll save the white seas no more. The tempest may sleep. Oh. I 
is that your testimony my soul in sad exile was out on life's sea so burdened with sin and distress and I heard a sweet voice say Janice Brown is ministering in song. We continue our worship. In this quiet place with you, I bow before your throne. I bear the deepest part of me to you and to you alone. I no secrets for there is no fault you have not known I bring my best and all the rest to you and lay them down with all my heart I want to and live my life 
each day to know you more all that is in me it's yours completely I'll serve you only with all my heart. You faithfully supply my needs according to your plan. So help me, Lord, to seek your face. Before I seek your hand and trust you know what's best for me when I don't understand, then follow in obedience in every circumstance with all my. I want to love you, Lord, and to live my life each day to know you more. All that is in me, it's yours completely. I'll serve you only. With all my heart In this quiet place with you Talk to Jesus for yourself I bow before your throne I bear the deepest part of me To you and you alone Secrets for there is no thought you have not known. I bring my best and all the rest to you and lay them down with all my heart. I want to love you. To live my life each day to know you more. All that is in me, it's yours completely. I'll serve you only with all. It's yours completely. I'll serve you only with all my heart. All the way my Savior leads me, whatever. has been my guide heavenly peace divinest comfort here by faith on him to dwell for All things well 
your testimony. Will you stand and sing it with me? All the way my Savior leads me. What have I to ask beside? Can you doubt his tender mercy who through life has been my comfort here by faith in him to dwell for I know what here before me Jesus doeth all things well for a prayer all the way my Savior leads me what have I to ask beside can I doubt his tender mercies whom through life has been my guide heavenly peace divine its comfort here by faith in him to dwell for i know what he'll be for me jesus do Ghost is in charge, brethren. Holy Ghost is in charge. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus doeth all things well. Yes, he's positioning us. He's working it out for our good. Somewhere the flag of victory waves, though I can't see. And beyond the sound of battle, there's victory for me. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, oh Jesus. I know in services like these there are different reactions. Some are being comforted by the Holy Ghost and some are being seriously convicted. Amen. But it is the same wonderful God working in our lives to bring us to a place where we can truly know him. Just move around and greet a few persons and tell them, surrender to the Holy Ghost tonight. Just say that to them. Yield to the Spirit of God tonight. Don't fight it. God is trying to reach you.
Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Tomorrow at 4 p.m. there's junior choir practice. At 6 p.m. combined choir practice. Golden Ages Luncheon will be held at City View Hotel, Smoky Vale, and the bus will leave the tabernacle at 1.30. At 6 p.m., there is an ACA social in the Ralph and Helen Reynolds Hall. 7 p.m. on Friday, there is a teen social and agape ministry banquet at the Four Seasons Hotel. The cost is $3,500 per person, and it's due today. Praise the Lord, everyone. Amen. And on Sunday at 8.30, we have Sunday school. Before that, we have prayer, 10.15, worship service, and... Uh, 6.30, our Sunday school Christmas program, and that will be the last service, last evening service for 2013. I'm going to ask our ushers to come, and we're going to be receiving an offering. Let's stand. And anything the Holy Ghost wants to do, that's all right with us. Lift your hands and worship God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Lord, bless us now as we give tonight. We're giving because we love you. And we have come to understand that under the sun, money answereth all things. You said that in your word. We have come to understand that. Bless us tonight, Lord. Continue to have your way. This is really not our service. It's your service. Continue to stir up the Holy Ghost all over the room and bless your people in a special way. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. May be seated. The ushers are waiting on us. Give us unto the Lord. Brother Nathan Thomas is leading us in worship as we come. to worthy thou art worthy thou art worthy oh Lord oh to receive glory Oh 
worship the Lord for a little while. after it. sins.
have a place that you can run to if you have not found that place yet I would advise you to hurry up you're going to need it you're going to need it you're going to need it want to ask you this evening if you would turn to the gospel according to Matthew next uh, Sunday morning if the Lord tarries and our lives are spared we'll try to finish up uh, that message that we began today I'm in a great house but what kind of vessel am I Matthew chapter 14 verse 22 to 33 and straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking, on the sea they were troubled saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear can you identify with that brethren yes can you identify with that huh some of you ladies you don't need to see a spirit you just need to see a lizard or a roach Praise the Lord. And uh, those of us who lived in an earlier time remember when it got dark and we would be outside and somebody would say, Dop it! And we would run. But straightway Jesus spake unto them saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, Wherefore didst thou doubt? When they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Um, 
like to just ask us to focus on Jesus. Amen? Focus on Jesus. You may be seated, please. Jesus, the Bible says in verse 22, constrained his disciples to get into a ship. That word constrained is a strong word. He compelled them. Perhaps they did not want to leave him on the other side, but he compelled them. He prevailed upon them to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side. He intended to send the multitudes away. And uh, it's very important for us, brethren, to obey when Jesus speaks to us. Even though we might feel that his request is unusual, even though we might feel that it's not logical, let's obey what he says. Amen? And so they did that. And when the ship was in the middle of the sea, the wind became contrary. And a storm arose when, as we would say in Jamaica, they could neither seven nor eleven. They could neither thee nor thou. They couldn't go back and they couldn't go forward. They were stuck in the middle of the sea. Do you think that was an enjoyable situation for them? The sea was contrary, and the ship was tossed with waves. Tossed. Can you imagine that? A ship tossed with waves. Tossed with waves. Now, this is not the first time this is happening to them. It had happened already. Amen? But when it happened on a previous occasion... Jesus was in the ship with them. So he is bringing them to another point of crisis. This is another test that they are facing, a sterner test than the one that they have already passed through. He is, he is testing them because it is getting closer to the time when he has to leave. And he is testing them. How are you going to operate when I am not there physically? I'm not there physically. I'll always be there because I'm omnipresent. But when I'm not there physically, how will you operate? And uh, Mark tells us that he was on the land and they were in the midst of the sea and he watched them toiling in rowing. They were fighting the sea. They were struggling. They were trying to row. But it just didn't make any sense. And Jesus saw them. Now the Bible says he sent them out at even which was at about 6 o'clock. And the first watch of the night lasted from 6 till 9. So they were there from 6 till 9. And Jesus was watching them. Wouldn't you have wanted Jesus to come? You would have wanted, wanted him to come from 10 past 6. Wouldn't you? From 6. A minute past six. But then the second watch came, nine to twelve, and he didn't come. He, he watched them. He watched them. 
He's saying, let me see how you cope. Because in this world, th this, this is just a little micro picture of the world that I'm leaving you in. You're always going to be in a storm. Once you are my disciples, you'll always be in a storm. Because the world does not like you. Amen. Once you decide to live for me, you're going to have tribulation. Amen. Amen. He said it to them. In this world, you shall have tribulation. So, so he's watching them. Six hours and nothing doing. Can you imagine that? Third watch, 12 to 3. Still hasn't come. Nine hours in the middle of the sea. And he watching, he's watching them toiling in rowing. Now, in the fourth watch, fourth watch lasted from three to six. In the fourth watch, he comes. And he comes walking on the sea. Now, the thing we have to note, brethren, is that he was not walking on a calm sea. The sea did not become calm when he started to walk. Remember now that it was not until Peter and he got into the ship that the Bible says the wind ceased. Remember now that when Peter started to walk, the Bible says the winds were still boisterous. So when Jesus was walking, the ship was still being tossed. But he was coming. They just saw him stepping on the waves. Sea roaring. The waves, the billows tossing. But he just walked. That's why they cried out in fear. They said this could never be a human being. Doing this, not on a sea like this, not in a storm like this. It must be a spirit. And so they cried out. I can just imagine how they felt. I don't know what I would do. I probably would have jumped out of the boat. Praise the Lord. Amen. But, but, but he's walking on that which is causing them trouble. But he's not taking the trouble away. He's demonstrating to them that I am master. I am master. This, the, the first time I was there and I was sleeping. And you didn't. I, I had told you let us go over to the other side. Let us go over and when I say let us go over all of us are going over and if I say we're going over we're going over it doesn't matter what happens between the time when we start and the time when we reach eventually we're going over because I said so and so this church needs to be a church that believes the word of God Amen. This church needs to be a church that holds on to the living word of God. Amen. Amen. We must be a church that loves the solidity of the word more than we love emotional worship. I am not saying that emotional worship is wrong. It is right. And we must continue. But it is the solidity of the word that is going to ground us in the storm. It is God's word that is going to hold us in the storm. We have to believe God's word. Because if he says it, it's going to be done. It doesn't matter what happens. If God says it, it will be done. So he's, he's watching them and he says, now, now that first time when you, when you shook me, I, I just got up and 
rebuked the wind. And there was a great calm. But now I want to demonstrate to you that there doesn't have to be an immediate calm. You, you have been here for many hours and you're still alive because though you are in a storm, though you are being tossed, you are in my will and you are being kept by my power. And if the storm lasts for 20 days, you're going to be going over because I said so. Just hold on and ride out the storm. It will not defeat you. You will never go down. Not if you are in my word. And I am told that many years ago, a lady stood to testify here at Pentecostal Tabernacle. And her testimony was, I would rather be in the word of God than to be in heaven. And when many wondered, the lady said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. So, so Jesus is saying to them, look, I want you to understand that I always am in control. The thing I want you to focus on is not the storm. Get used to the storm. Get used to the attack of the devil. Get used to disappointment. Get used to people in church treating you bad. Get used to it. Get used to them telling lies on you. Get used to them judging you. It's not going to stop. Get used to the world being hostile to you. It's going to get worse. You can't convert the devil. Whether we like it or not. There are some things Jesus says that are very hard. Hard to comprehend. Because there are some hard things in the Bible that we don't like to grapple with. We don't like to grapple with the fact that he said to his disciples, I have chosen 12 of you and one of you is a devil. I have deliberately chosen a devil. I did not make a mistake. So Satan will always be among the saints. And Satan can find himself on the board. Satan can find himself around the master. Satan can be sent out to work miracles. Jesus said, ye are of your father the devil to some people one day. And the lusts of your father you will do. You are of the devil. We don't like that. So we think the world must be accommodating. We think we'll always be happy. And how could they refuse to hear the gospel? Jesus is saying to us, get used to the storm. Get used to a rough ride. Amen, amen, amen. And as we said today, he's, he's shaking everything that can be shaken. He, he's trying to get rid of the foolishness and the fluff and the stuff. He's trying to shake the church with an agitation so that we will be ready. So, brethren, let's stop praying that the storm... The storms will be over. They'll be over when we land on the shore. As long as we are in the sea, we'll have storms. Oh, we'll have moments of calm water for sure. For sure we'll sail smoothly for part of the time. But we'll always be susceptible to storms. So, so the thing to do is not focus on the storm but to focus on the one 
who can walk on the storm. So now as Jesus gets close to the boat, Peter, he, he, they, they cry out in fear and he says, don't be afraid. It's me. It's not a ghost. It's not a duppy. It's me. And Peter said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. Kind of have to admire Peter. With the waves tossing and the wind contrary and the sky black, Peter says, I'd like to do that too. I want to be master too of the circumstances. And Jesus did not say, Peter, you're over your head here. You don't know what you're asking. Jesus said, come. Come. If, if the other disciples had said, bid us to come, he would have said, come. I believe he, was, he felt good that Peter said, if it's you, tell me to come. And there are, God is working in this church. I feel it. There are people who are getting to the point where they are wanting to say, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come. I step out of the boat. I step out of my, my, my comfort zone and I walk on water as it were to come to you. I, I want to do your will and it's, it's, it's rough in the boat anyway. I just feel God doing it. Just, there are some people that are getting tired of religion. Just some members in this assembly that are all churched out. They, they, they are tired of doing church. They, they want an encounter with the almighty God. They, they, they want to, 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 to prove the God that they serve. They, they want to touch him. And is it you? So the Lord said, Come. And Peter is looking at Jesus. And he steps out of the boat and begins to walk on water. And the, uh, if you. If you read it, the Greek tells us that uh, Jesus and Peter, their feet were actually making contact with the water. So they were walking on water as I am walking on this platform. Their feet were making contact with the water. But the water was not giving. They were walking as if on solid ground. And, and as long as Peter kept focusing on Jesus, he was all right. And, 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 and just then, when he was doing so well, when he stepped out of the boat, the wind was blowing. When he stepped out of the boat, the waves were tossing. But, but because his focus was on Jesus. He, he, he was doing what Jesus did. But, but once he took his eyes off Jesus and began to focus on the storm, on his circumstances, on all the things that were happening around him, he began to go down. Began to go down. And see, what Jesus is saying to us in this is, it's not about stopping the storm. It's not about a quiet life. It's about keeping your focus on me. Because Peter, if you had kept your focus on me, we would have been walking together on the sea. And your testimony would have been so different. All you had to do was focus on me. You were doing so well. 
Didn't you feel it? I guess Peter might have said to himself, Is what am I really walking on? And the Bible says that he said, Lord, save me. He was beginning to sink. And uh, have you ever worked out how could Jesus have caught him? How could you catch a man? See, see what Jesus did. Jesus is standing on solid ground. The sea is like a solid pavement to him. So everywhere he goes is solid ground. So Peter is sinking and he just pulls him to where he is. Because he can't sink. So all he does is just pull Peter and say, all right, you're on solid ground now. Let's just walk to the ship. And immediately they got into the ship. There was a calm. But Jesus was trying to say to Peter and to, to the disciples, the calm is not the important thing. The important thing is me. Keep your focus on me. Because some of the storms that are going to afflict you, you haven't dreamed about them yet. You better keep your focus on me or you are going to sink. So, I'd like to say to somebody tonight who is going through a storm. See, brethren, earlier in my ministry, I was of the view that what needed to happen was that the storm needed to end. Somebody needed to speak to the storm. Somebody needed to say, peace be still. And, and sometimes that does happen. But sometimes Jesus says, walk on water. You, I, the storm is going to rage. Step out of the ship and come to me. And so, there are some of us in the room tonight who will ever have storms. There are some people God is not going to change your circumstance. I'm sorry to be the one to tell you. I just want to say, brethren, those of us who preach the word, it is time for us to ask God to give us back our prophetic voice. And I don't mean foretelling, I mean forth telling. The scribe writes, he has to read other people's experience. The prophet speaks from his encounters. Prophet says, I have experienced this. This is what God can do. Too long the voice in the pulpit has been the voice of the scribe. Just reading. The thoughts of others. Time for the Ministers to have encounters with God. Time for the singers to have encounters with God. So that when you minister, your ministry is authentic. People can feel it. I'm going to stop now. I just want to read from 1 Kings Chapter 19, verses 1 to 14. And I'll close. Brethren, we want us to remember that the storm is not the important thing. The important thing is 
focusing on Jesus. Make sure that you can see Jesus. Because some of us are going to be afflicted with diseases. Some of us are going to lose loved ones. Some of us, our marriages are going to be in trouble. Some of us are going to lose our jobs. Some of us are going to come in conflict with our world because of Jesus. Because of the testimony of Jesus. We're going to be put on islands like Patmos. Focus on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And ride out the storm. 1 Kings 19, 1 to 14. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And withal, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Ahab was a real mama man. That's why he couldn't be a good king. Jezebel was the one who wore the pants in that house. I hope there's no marriage here like that. He runs to Jezebel. That's, that, that was his way of life. You know, when, 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 when Naboth said to him, you cannot have my vineyard, he, ran, he, he went and cried to Jezebel. So now Elijah has killed all the prophets of Baal. He goes to Je Jezebel and cries. And Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying, So let the gods, listen to this friend, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Now Elijah had the day before stood on Mount Carmel, and said, you have your gods. And I have my God. The God who answers by fire. Let him be God. And when they called on their God. Elijah was mocking them. Because he knew that Baal was a no God. But now Jezebel is saying, so let the gods. The same no gods. That you were ridiculing yesterday. You are afraid of them today. See how human even the most anointed one among us is. He took his eyes off Jesus. And fixed his eye on Jezebel. One man the day before. Stood up against 850 men. And now one woman. You know that Elijah ran from Dan to Beersheba. You know what that means? He ran from Moran Point to Negril Point. He ran from one end of Israel to the next end. From one woman. And the day before, he had killed 850 men. We have to be very careful what we do after we have ministered. After the anointing passes, be very careful. That's when we must keep our eyes on Jesus. When he saw that, 
he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. <laughs> but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life. For I am not better than my father. Self-pity. It is one of the most terrible demons inside of us. Self-pity. I'm not better than my father's. And included in that is, look how hard I've tried. But it hasn't made any sense. That's the devil. That's the discouragement of the devil. And we've all been there. Every one of us have sat down on that juniper tree and said, it is enough. Let me die. How many know what I'm talking about? Some of you sitting there right now. I want to die. You didn't want to die yesterday. You want to die today. Yesterday you were telling the king, get up and go to your capital. Rain is going to fall and break the drought. With the prophetic voice. But now. He's saying I want to die. So. He lay and slept under a juniper tree. Behold then an angel touched him. And said unto him. Arise and eat. And he looked. And behold there was a cake. Bacon on the coals. I'm sorry, folks, I don't think it was cheesecake. And a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. You're tired, you're spent, you're drained, you have given everything. Your mental faculties have been depleted. You, you need... See, folks, we don't understand. Samson, Samson, Samson didn't just want sex. Samson wanted to come home and have somebody just brush his hair. See, he just, just needed something to... to, to, to to somebody to come to after giving everything. And all of us need that. And we, we, we must not despise men because they are human. Because we are of the same humanity. Amen. Is it not so? He arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. So one meal, one cake and a bottle of water lasted him for 40 days. He came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Elijah, you, you are my prophet. What are you doing in a cave? What doest thou here, Elijah? Why have you run away from your ministry? Discouragement. You've abandoned your prophetic call because you're discouraged. This little lady threatened you. He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. 
self-pity. Me alone. Nobody else in the church don't see it my way. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. Who passed by? And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. What a wind that was. The wind was so strong that it tore the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces. But what does the Bible say? The Lord was not in the wind. Don't let sometimes what happens in church fool you. God is not in every breeze. God is not in every manifestation. Some of them are just self. God is not in it. God is not in everything that happens to you. People said, boy, pastor, it must be God. Because she just called me like that. Out of the blues. I wasn't expecting it. And she just called me. And the Lord read my mind because that's just what I needed at that time. And some apostolic would have said, God must be in this. And we would have even started to sing, the wind is blowing again, the wind is blowing again, just like the day of Pentecost. But the Bible says the Lord was not in the wind. So God is not always in the wind. See, it's important to keep our eyes on Jesus. But you can't look at manifestations to keep your eye on Jesus. Can't look at the wind. Okay. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. So a shaking. And we would have said that must be the Holy Ghost. We, you know, we sing some songs. I don't, I don't know if we are conscious about it. I was somewhere overseas and heard somebody get up and say, I feel like a fire shot up within my bones. I understand. But uh, have you ever read where that came from? You know where that saying came from? Feel like a fire shot up within my bones. You know where it came from? It came from Jeremiah. Jeremiah said, I don't want to preach anymore. I don't want to speak anymore for you. I'm tired of this. I'm tired. Everywhere I got people calling me name. So I see the doom man there. Everything is doom. Since you can't give me no other message, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm through. And Jeremiah said his word was in me. So even though I didn't want to do it, I was forced to because the thing was in me like a fire. But we look at it as something good. I feel like a fire. So I, I don't mind it as long as we understand that that's not what the Bible was. I don't mind it. You know, I really don't. After the earthquake of fire. And now we would have said yes. This is it. Fire, fire, fire. Fire fall on me. But the Lord was not in the fire. Where can you always find the Lord? In his word. In his word. If you want to focus on Jesus. 
Focus on the word. Read the word. Understand the word. Live the word. If you do that, you'll keep your focus right. Amen? Amen? If you get a dream or a vision and it is not consistent with the word, it didn't come from God. Even if you get it three nights in a row, even if you didn't eat no late stew peas and rice, it still didn't come from God. So, in keeping our focus on Jesus, let's keep our focus on the word. And when God manifests himself to you in another way, and when he uses you in another way, don't forget the word. Come back to the word. And say, Lord, keep me grounded in your word. Because I want to see you. I'm going through a storm. I need and, and folks, you can't run all around town getting a word from everybody. Be careful of running around and getting a word from everybody. Because some of them need a word for themselves. Let's stand. Folks, I, I don't want to be a prophet of doom, but I know next year is going to be rough if the Lord tarries. I know it. And I, folks, listen to me. Devil is going to... Going to attack this church. And when it happens, don't forget that I told you. What we need to do, and he's going to attack us personally in our own private lives. When it happens, remember, it's not the storm that's important. Focus on Jesus. Touch your neighbor and say, let's focus on Jesus. Tell somebody else, let's ask God to order our steps in the word. Tell somebody else, after God uses you, find a place of prayer. God is going to in order to save us, brethren, God is going to have to put us through the grinder. Because some of us will not be saved any other way. If God doesn't, doesn't strip us down and just get stuff out of it, us in a rough way, we'll never be saved. He just loves us too much to leave us alone. So make up your mind. That I'm going to focus on Jesus and ride out my storm. Let's lift our hands and worship him. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Amen. Amen. We're going to do one thing and go. I need the choir to sing. I've gone through the fire. And I've been through the flood. I've been broken into pieces. Seen lightning flashing from above. But through it all, I remember that he loves me and he cares. And he'll never put more on me than I can bear. After that, just sing it maybe once or twice. We'll pray and go home.
members of the choir hold hands with somebody as you sing this you know you have to go through this together saints hold somebody's hand we we have to go through this together we're not going to have an altar call today but we're going to pray for each other because somebody's hand who you're holding now is going through it right now
we're going to pray we're going to pray and go uh, <laughs> choir members can I ask you to just let's go into the altar musicians let's go into the altar sound technicians and media personnel just just leave what you're doing and join us in the altar we're going to pray for each other and go home uh, ministers would you join us in the altar board members Uh, oh Jesus choir members choir members musicians sound technicians I, I, I want us to help each other to, to push tonight to pray and just keep the focus the storm is not the important thing the important thing is Jesus if, if you feel like coming to the altar, we invite you. You don't have to. I'm not pressuring anybody. Just if you feel led to. But even if you don't come, hold hands, link with a few people. Mm. Everybody in the building, I need for you to... Hallelujah! Oh, I feel a stirring of the Holy Ghost. Mm. Upon this rock, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Lord Jesus, destroy every yoke. In the name of Jesus, cast down imaginations, pull down strongholds, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. We come against it in Jesus' name. Find somebody to pray with, link with somebody. Let's just begin to pray. We're going to pray and go home. There's not going to be any more songs. Just we're going to pray for each other and just go home. Just find somebody to pray with. We're praying that God would help us to keep our focus right. Storms are not what's important. What's important is that we keep our eyes on Jesus. Don't let anybody seduce you to do what's wrong. Don't let anybody corrupt you. I'm warning you. Don't let anybody put any ideas in your head to draw you away from Jesus.
Hallelujah. Amen. Lift your hands and worship the Lord. Just thank Him for what He's doing. Thank Him for what He's doing. Thank Him for what He's doing in your life. Jesus, Jesus, Lord bless you if you want to stay longer and pray, if you're praying with somebody or if you just want to stay a little longer in the presence of the Lord, that's okay, amen. Try and greet a few people before you leave. If you left your cell phone, we might have it here if you can identify it. If you don't have your cell phone, 